Warning! Warning! I am an idiot. I'm just a guy in a pole barn. Get it? Pole barn garage. Anything I say to do, you do at your own risk. I'm just some dude. Let that be your disclaimer. Let's get on with the show. Welcome back, friends and enemies, to another episode of Pole Barn Garage. We're out here on a cold and rainy night once again to get a little more work done on this guy. I think we're going to do the front suspension which is basically just shocks, and I want to put some spring spacers in the front. You'll see why. And I'm thinking, knock that out. Maybe we'll go ahead and try to get her fired up, button up a few things on the engine. We've got to bolt the torque converter up, got to put a transmission mount on, hook the shifter up, and put a drive shaft in it. Now, I think we can handle that in this episode for sure. Hopefully, at the end of it, you'll see it, you know, fire off. I want to leave the steering components alone for now because. I don't know, they don't look that bad, honestly. They all took grease, and they don't feel bad. I'm sure they will be bad, but for the time being, we can hold off. And though it's not like any of that's hard to do later on. We're doing the shocks, and what always happens is this nut ends up getting stuck on the threads. It spins the whole inside of the shock. And, uh... Really, the best only way to do this is to just chop it off of there. I don't actually have any cutoff wheels. I have this grinding wheel that will get through there eventually. Now you might notice that I am in fact wearing safety glasses for the first time in this entire series. And that's because there's been a few of you guys that were concerned that I don't wear the proper PPE and I get it, I really do. So this is for you. I'm gonna wear my safety glasses, all right? You don't, don't get used to it though. But I will, this time, promise. Well, your next step to ripping out these shocks is you got two half inch bolts down here and uh, you know the clips on these break every single time so they're never going to come out easily and you're always going to have to fish some vice grips up in here to get them out but you know we'll give it the old college try here with the impact oh no i won't the car's too low Damn it. And as I will demonstrate here, this is exactly what always happened. It no go nowhere. How do you do that? How do you get around that, huh? Well, you can cut these off. You can fish a wrench down, because there's actually a hex head on the clip. Then you sometimes can fish a wrench down inside of the spring pocket to get to it. But, uh, I think the obvious route is just to, you know, cut them off because I'm lazy. So, I'll get back to you when I finish that. All right, our shock is out. I was, of course, very gentle in removing it. You know, definitely made no mistakes. So, what kind of shocks are these bad boys? Also, I cut it in half, but I don't know. Sears, maybe, they're blue. Made in the USA, though, pretty cool. To the scrap pile with you. So we're gonna knock out the other side. We'll go ahead and pop a new one in here. So we're ready to install one shock in here and I have in my hands two different shocks. This is a KYB gas adjust. This is a good mono tube design shock. Uh, they're about $35, $40 a piece for most cars. They're made in Japan and uh, they're actually really good. They're one of the best shocks you can buy for a bolt-on application. Uh, I use them quite a bit and they're excellent. They ride good and they handle good. You'll see a noticeable improvement if you use these. So of course we're not going to use these and instead we're going to attempt to use these strange off-brand whatever this is in the front. Why? Well because we want to look like we are king of the trailer park. It's 1981. Sammy Hagar is on the radio. We're blasting out. I can't drive 55. I don't know when that came out. Somebody's going to correct me. This is our GTO, okay? We drug, we drug it right out of Uncle Daddy's field. And 
and you know we need her all raked up you know on our big old Craigers side pipes you know just to just to show those neighbors next door who's boss you know plans have changed uh, this doesn't fit at all I don't understand how that's supposed to work this washer thing will not fit in that control arm I guess we will use the far superior KYB shocks instead and I'm kind of broke up about it I'm not gonna lie to you because I really wanted to try these out I guess we'll throw them on the shelf for uh, another project when you're putting the shock in you can see that it just slides up into the coil spring here we're not going to replace those clips that we uh, broke we're just going to use regular old bolts and nuts I don't normally like to do this because I don't like the bolt threads hanging down where they can get gacked up but I don't really care so that's what we're doing here dirty rotten son of a biscuit eating jelly slinging mongoose riding ah there we go now we can zip those down and be good to go we gotta throw our bushing and nut on the top side then we put our bushing in start that on there and you get the picture and now we'll tighten up the lower tighten that up call it a day and here's what your final product should look like you know like it did except for it's got a better bushing in it now and it works on to the next side knock that one out and put you on the uh, you know instant time travel and uh, then we're gonna find something else to tinker with Well, I was about to just toss this in the scrap pile, you know, the old chalk out of the other side. And I noticed that is a Monroe Matic, and that says lifetime guarantee. It would appear that it didn't hold up for the lifetime of the vehicle. Yeah, it's bad. So. Can I warranty these things? Somebody call up Monroe and ask if I can get me a brand new pair of Monroe-matic shocks. Because I'm quite disappointed that these didn't last 50 years in one or two or seven gunfights. I got this one off my dad. And it did have the shifter rod was all messed up. I just swapped that out with another one. And that's a cable and everything. And it's for an A-body, I believe, with that bolt pattern on the back. So. Uh, this should just bolt right in. That's that's easier. We'll just put it in, I guess. We still got to put the transmission cable mount on and uh, hook it up to the trans, obviously. But I'm pretty sure this will work. We're gonna make another one of our patented grommets for that. Except for I used all the kill mat. So we have to find something else. Probably radiator hose. Also, if you can't tell, it's cold again. This will make me feel better though. Just having this in here will make me be able to, you know, sit in it and pretend I'm driving. Ugh. You have a shifter top plate for like a 69 to like what, 74 Pontiac? Uh, let me know. I'll buy it from you. I know you can get all this stuff new, but. You know, if I can get it used, get a little cheaper, you make a couple of bucks, it's a win-win. This is one of those uh, slap shifts where the shifter moves over sideways and you can slam it into gear. It's supposed to. It kind of works. That's oh, Some GM cars got them, some didn't. But that anytime you got a shifter that pulls over to the side, there's a little detent in it and you can slam it through the gears without going into neutral. Maybe if we use it enough, it'll come around for us. So our grommet is going to be made out of a chunk of radiator hose, and we'll just zip tie this little chunk right here 
to keep it from rubbing. Then we'll screw the bigger part around it to keep us from suffocating. Well, I don't even know. That's not why. I don't know. It, there's holes everywhere. That's how you can seal off a big old hole in your floor pan for free. As long as you have a stash of completely no good hoses laying about like I do. So I got the console in, but it's sitting high on that shift. And if you look at the back side of these things, those holes are slotted. So we can move the shifter down about an inch, and that'll probably give us what we need. Well, that's a fair bit better. Still high though. Couldn't have anything to do with how I constructed this console. I refuse to even acknowledge that that is a possibility. At least it is in the vehicle. And we'll screw it down where the original 8-track player goes here. If we can get that in there, that'll hold the front of that shifter down too. Two birds, one stone. I went down to get the mail, and what do I find? A hat from my friends over at HH Wheels. Uh, they're another YouTube channel. You can check them out. They're really well produced videos. Uh, and they, they got some cool stuff on there, like some high end stuff. And so if you want like the polar opposite of what I do, I would recommend checking them out. So thanks a lot guys for the hat. Except for, well, I think it got messed up at shipping or, or something. See that the bill is flat. I don't, I don't, it must have got smushed or something in the, in the box or something. There we go. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will tell you, this is actually a really nice hat. Like, it's really well made. But if we can just, you know, shape that bill and back the way, you know, they're supposed to be. It's not bad. Is that bad? Do I look goofy? Anyway, let's get back to work. I just wanted to point that out. We bolted the front down to the factory track mount, and that held our shifter up no problem. However, we have this issue here, and it's supposed to screw down to a mount on top of the trans tunnel, and uh, that's not going to happen. It's gone. Uh, the, this, the nice console I had is actually not very nice. Oh, it just ripped my pants. Are you... God dang it. All right, anyway, pants situation has been remedied. We're just gonna shoot some self-tappers, of course. Right into the side of this. That's gonna hold it no problem. Much better. Shoot one on the other side, and we'll move on to under the car. All right, we're back under here. We're gonna remove the transmission mount, put our new unit in, and then we're gonna drop the... That sounds like it's full of not fluid. Okay. But anyway, we're gonna drop the pan, throw a new gasket on it, new filter in it, and bolt the torque converter up. And I'd also like to try to get the transmission lines on. That way when we fire it up, it doesn't, you know, look like a horror film in here. So, yeah, that's our game plan here. Uh, let's just, I'm pretty sure these are 5 8 up here. This would have been way easier to do uh, before I put the engine and trans in the car. But it is what it is. I forgot that it didn't have one. So we'll rip this off. I'm dumb. You got to lift the transmission up. So just use a block of wood to jack, hold it up a little bit. And it sure makes your life easier. Anyway, you can see that that is the old mount, and it is uh, bad. And this is the new mount, and it is uh, not bad. So, just slip her on up in there. Okay, so let me go jack this up. You know what I need? A lift. But I guess that would kind of ruin the appeal, huh? The holes on these transmission mounts are slotted to allow for the wide range of chicken lao mein that may be produced at whatever factory this is coming from. So it, you know, gives you a little wiggle room. Alright, so once you get your new mount bolted in, you can drop it. It helps if you leave the transmission up a little bit so you can 
manipulate it and move it around easier to line your bolt holes up. They never seem to want to line like exactly up where they should. Now I'm sure there's a torque spec on these. I don't care enough to like look. Torque. Now we can drop the pan and see what mysteries lie within. So when you're dropping your pan, uh, basically you want to pull out all but like the last bolt and then flop it down and let it drain. Factory ones don't have a drain pan or a drain plug. So get you a, you know, a pan here to catch it or, you know, at least say you tried. And they, uh, that way when you make the mess you can at least say, well, I gave it a shot. I'm assuming there's not even anything in it. Not too much in there. So now we can just back off this one of these back ones. There it is. Hey, that's actually really red. I haven't put any fluid in this. That's a good sign. It looks really clean. I'll we'll have to look at the pan and the bottom of the pan, and that will tell the tale. Always smell it, too. You can smell burnt fluid. It doesn't smell burnt, but there's a lot of stuff in the bottom of this pan. I'm feeling a little less encouraged now. What the hell is this? Is that a leaf? It is a leaf. That's good. This is probably water. It's white stuff. And the fluid is pretty brown in the bottom of this. It doesn't feel gritty though. There is some stuff in here, but I feel like it's just old and dirt, maybe. Here, oh. Oh, man. There it is. That is straight clutch material there. This whole back edge. Hmm. Well, shoot. There's a pretty good chance that that transmission is, uh, no bueno. But... We don't really have any other option other than to give it a shot. Maybe we'll just throw a little, uh, throw a little transmission rebuild in there preemptively, you know. So if I gotta get that rebuilt, that's really gonna put a damper on us. I, I don't have the money for that. Let's go ahead and change the filter anyway. You know, the old way of thinking is, is that the grit in the transmission left over actually helps it continue working, and that is true. Uh, honestly, one of the worst things we probably could have done was drop that and drain it but we had to know and now we know so we will be putting some kind of additive in this to try to make up for that grit we could pop the filter out now when I pulled that pan off there was no RTV on either the pan or the trans which tells me it probably has never been into that, that's kind of a good sign actually because that would indicate it, it's just got some miles on it, you know, and it hasn't been a problem. Because normally if it failed, you know, somebody would at least check the, uh, you know, filter and stuff. These things are basically voodoo to me. I don't really know a whole lot about transmissions. Uh, I know enough to service them, and that's about it. I don't know what to look for other than it looks very clean. I could pull the valve body out and look, but I don't really see any reason to do it. But I can tell you right now, this has never been scraped on or anything. This That's never been off since it was new. Filter just looks like this. That's pretty much quit dripping, so we can get that out of our way. And there's just a little hole with an o-ring up here that you install this in. Goes with this little o-ring. If it stays in that hole, take it off and put it back on this tube so you don't accidentally jam it in there. Set that up there. It takes a special bolt with a shoulder on it. That allows the filter to float inside of the transmission pan. And it's supposed to do that. When you tighten this down, it's not supposed to be tight or snug. It's just supposed to float. Here you go. We'll go all hog wild on it. That right there is perfectly normal. Here's the old filter, and these, I think, are exceptionally decomposed leaves. 
in the filter. So that bodes well for how well this transmission is going to work. Let's dump it out. There's another leaf. Oh, good. Look at all the goo in here. Now just take your brake clean and, you know, rebuild it. Chunks. Oh. Is it possible that I've got another transmission that has been submerged at the bottom of the sea? Yes. It's all rust. It's water. So, before we get too started, we've got big dents in the pan here. Might as well flatten that back out with, you know, the, the giant sledgehammer. There. That's good. Now, for the scraping and the wire wheeling and the thorough brake cleaning. Prepare the assault. Oh my god. I declare it good or enough. Now, we're going to spray this transmission and I mean, there's really only one appropriate color to paint your transmission pan, and that's gold. You know, so we're going to pimp this trans. Oh, yeah. You know, with the rust pits, it looks like actual gold. I'm not actually just doing this just to be, you know, an idiot. I've always kind of liked the look of gold anodized stuff, like from back in the 70s. You know, if you poke your head under it, it might look like it's got like a Moroso pan or something. It does have a gold oil pan on the engine. So, we're going to go ahead and put our torque converter bolts in. And get you one of these things. Flywheel turner? Super handy, man. You know, they don't got to be bouncing back and forth or using a screwdriver up against it. No, these things are great. They're like 20 bucks. So when you pull the torque converter out of the transmission, there's going to be a gap between the converter pads and your flex plate. Usually, you don't want to pull it out too much. You want to like sixteenth of an inch max. Ours is pretty tight. I'm just gonna use some washers to shim the bolts. You'll see. Here's the gap I was talking about. You can pull the torque converter out to reach it. I wouldn't suggest pulling it out that far. That's at least a quarter of an inch. So just putting this little washer in here to shim this will make that about a sixteenth of an inch or so and that'll be just about perfect. Put our new pan gasket on and when it comes to transmission pan gaskets the only one i use is the felpro fiber gasket or any kind of fiber like this i don't know exactly what it's called but i don't like the neoprene ones because they push out i don't like the cork ones because well they just always leak although they are pretty good on a uh, flat pan but these fiber ones give you the best of both worlds and they work good, and it was six bucks at my O'Reilly. So this is the way to go for you guys. Y'all had some really good tips on how to save these tubes, by the way. It's too late for my tubes now, but then when I uh, go and buy some more, I'll be sure to try some of them out. Lay your gasket down. I don't glue the top side because that makes it a mess whenever you're trying to remove it again at some point. Now once you got your gasket on, don't leave bolts in the pan. And, uh, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Toss her on here, but don't forget, you gotta put your shifter cable bracket on as well. So this lined up suspiciously well, which means there's no way it's gonna work. But it literally just installed itself. I just popped it in the bracket and I just gotta put this cotter key in. And then we'll see if the shifter works. Things are happening down there. I don't know what. There's your ratcheting ashkin for that shifter. 
that I was talking about that only some GM shifters have. I cleaned it up pretty good. It seems to work now. If you push the shifter over, lock, back, over, second, lock, over, third, theoretically. Could be neutral. Neutral, reverse, park. That feels pretty good. I think that'll work for us. We need some transmission lines, right? And, uh, well, we could use the original ones. They actually don't have any bullet holes in them. And we'll just cut the ends off them and run some rubber hose up to her. Call it a day. But we might as well clean them up, seeing as they are in remarkably good shape. I'm just going to take this piece of sandpaper, kind of take all that dirt, crud off. Everything is full of dirt. Everything. Well, I guess it didn't have a radiator and it did it. Shoot. Try blowing it out first. Oh, yeah. Let's just wait till that gets clear. Ish. I call those good enough. Well, what do we have here? A box. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, this was sent to me from Roadkill Customs Magazine. Buzz at Roadkill Customs sent me this. Thank you, dude. There's an article on this car in Roadkill Customs Magazine. It's roadkillcustoms.com uh, for you guys to go check it out if you're the reading type. It's actually super good. There's a lot of DIY stuff on there. I wasn't even aware it existed, but now I'm reading it, you know, about every other day, just something. It's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I know magazines themselves are kind of a dying breed, but, uh, you know, online is the way to go. So anyway, Buzz sent me these because he asked what I needed for, or what I wanted for the car, you know, not so much what I need. And he said, well... I wouldn't want to do anything, you know, I wouldn't want to accept anything that I need for the car to be functional. You know what I mean? If I'm going to accept anything, or like a sponsorship type thing, I want it to be just extra flair. But at the end of the day, I want you guys to know that everything I do that needs to be done can be done for literally zero. Oh, would you look at that? side pipes. These are Patriot glass pack side pipes with heat shields right there and that is just going to complete our late 70s street machine look that we want. Oh yeah, look at that. That's sweet. Oh that's so cool. So this is awesome. But again, I'm a broke guy just like most of you guys are. And I, uh, well, not saying you're broke, but you know what I mean. You don't have, well, almost $400 just to blow, well, $339 just to blow on a pair of side pipes just because you want them. And I get that. I can't turn down the opportunity for it, but I will make sure to do it within reason. We're not in a spot to do them right yet. I just wanted to show you guys this, just so you got an idea of what's coming down the pike. So now it's time to hook up our transmission lines. So let me uh, scoot under here, and I'll see you in a minute. Ah, uh, hello there. Where do you belong? That's a good question. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Rotten. Son of a... Come, pick. come here, you. Lines are on. I don't remember where that clip went. And I'm guessing there's supposed to be something to hold them down to the cross member. Pretty sure I put them on upside down. But this will work because this one lands right about in line there. And then this one lands right about 
here. So I figure, you know, for our transmission, it needs an extra special secret sauce. And uh, so I, of course, went out and bought the highest quality transmission fluid available, which is, of course, Harvest King Dexmerc Automatic Transmission Fluid. It doesn't even claim to be premium. This stuff uh, is made in the U.S., and uh, I've never had any problems with it, actually. Uh, and you get this at Farm and Home, right now anyway, it's $21.99 for two gallons of it, okay? There is no cheaper place to buy this stuff. And it seems to work fine. I know that if you go to a parts store and try to buy training fluid, it's like $7 a quart, okay? Go to your local Farm and Home. Maybe even like a tractor supply or something, I don't know, but definitely a Farm and Home store will have this. And dirt cheap. To top her off, we're gonna just go ahead and, you know, put this transmission rebuild in it, stop leak and tune up, it stops slips, fixes leaks, and restores the seals. Sounds pretty good to me. So I think I gotta shake this stuff up real good. Double money back guarantee. <laughs> All right, suckers. <laughs> the real reason I'm using this is because basically there's just little chunks of crap in here and some isopropyl alcohol. The isopropyl alcohol causes the rubber seals to swell up and seal. And then the little gritty stuff it has in there, that's where they get the stop-slip stuff from. And, I mean, it works. Usually temporarily, but if you can catch one that's like not quite all the way out or on its way out yet, you might get a few more thousand miles out of it with this. And that's good enough for me for now. For 12 bucks, I'm, I'm gonna give it a shot. You can tell that this looks like a perfectly natural substance that you would want to pour in your transmission. Need every drop now. I got the big one because I figured, you know, we need big fixing. Now here's the only downside to the Harvest King transmission fluid. Is that it comes in two gallon jugs. And they are girthy. Obviously we can't fill it, fill it because we're not running it yet. But I just want something in there so it sucks it up, you know. Don't want to be running it dry anywhere in there. We can't take that chance. Your best course of action anytime you're using a steel line and, you know, mating it to a couple of rubber hoses is A, flare the ends, which I didn't do, and B, use as little rubber as possible. Another thing, when you're tightening your clamps, make sure you put the screw head somewhere you can get to it after the car's reassembled. For example, we will position this, apparently I'm bleeding, we will position this to where we can just shoot down on the top here and grab it. As you can see, it doesn't look bad at all. Looks just like it should be that way. Now you guys are giving me a whole lot of flack about this Fram oil filter. Now don't worry, it's going away, it won't ever hurt anybody or anybody's engine again. Like the old saying goes, off with the Fram. On with the wicks. I know a lot of guys out there say, oh, let's write the date on it, the miles and stuff. Come on, man. This thing's not getting an oil change for at least 30,000 if you may. All right, let's get the one size fits some wrench out. And this really shouldn't be too bad. I don't think it went too long, you know, in my car before I took it out. Probably only 10, 50,000 miles or so. Ah! Oh good, it's empty. Well, I'm glad I haven't started it yet. Where did the oil go? Now you guys saw the uh, oil filter already. It's a quality Wix unit. However, what is our flavor of oil? Is it uh, fancy diesel oil? Is it uh, Valvoline BR1, $40, 5 quarts? No. Harvest King, available from Farm at Home. $11.99 for five quarts of this stuff. It meets all the same API stuff as any other oil does. Now, flat tap it cam, right? Gotta have zinc. That's why the diesel oil is tempting and cheap. Hard to find right now for some reason. So, zinc additive, right? Zinc additive, generally expensive. Not so fast. STP, oil treatment contains ZDDP. Is it enough? I don't know. But is it $3 at Walmart? Yes. And that's good enough for me. I'm going to unapologetically steal this from Vice Grip Garage. 
when it comes to mixing in oil supplements. Pour a little bit of your oil in there. Take your oil supplement, which is, you know, goo, <laughs> and just mix those two in so that it thins it out. It does help a lot. It's a good tip, you know. Just like he shows you, just shake her up. We will now pour the molasses concoction. Nothing dumping out on the ground yet. This car probably hasn't had this done in quite a while. This battery back here is way too small. I'm gonna hook this other crappy battery on this one. It's only 550 cranking amps. That's uh, not enough. I know this is a no-no for a lot of guys, but uh, well, makes life easier. <laughs> Give it a little more timing. Pontiacs rotate counterclockwise, so we'll turn it that way just a smidge. <laughs> now, if we can just get some gas pulled up here, we'll be in good shape. What could possibly go wrong here? Oh yeah, that's a lot. tinker with it a little bit, get her dialed in so she'll run. Well, we know she makes joyful noises. So, what that needs us to do now, we have it running. Doesn't look like anything's puking out of it, really. Maybe, I don't know. I haven't really looked. There's, I know there's not enough coolant in it, so I don't want to run it too long, but we can dial the timing in. Anyway, this company, Kai Z, sent me this timing light, and they asked me to review it. And uh, I told them I, that's not really what I do, but I said I'd be more than willing to use it, you know, in my channel. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be dead honest about it. If it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not, right? So first thing I notice, it is made in China. However, a lot of them are nowadays. It's like 100 bucks on Amazon, and I'm going to include a link in the description with a discount code if you guys want one uh, after this. And the good thing about these digital timing lights is that you can dial back to zero, and you don't really need the timing marks on the engine as long as you know where top dead center is. They are really handy, and I did just happen to be in need of one, actually. So, I've never used this one in particular. Obviously, I just threw the instructions away. So, let's see how simple it is to work, if it's just like any old timing light, or if there's anything special about it. Hooking up a timing light, an inductive timing light, uses this clamp to sense the uh, current passing through the plug wire. You put it on the number one plug, just because that's what everything is referenced from. And then you gotta ground it and get power to it. Well, normally you just clamp these to your battery. We don't have that. So I'm just gonna ground it to the alternator bracket and then take this, you know, maybe right off the back of the alternator. And what do we got? Let's see here, we got uh, numbers. So there's two and four stroke. Uh, Oh, RPM and timing. 
and advance. Okay. So we're going to shoot for, let's say, oh, let's shoot for 14. I like 14 on this. It's a low compression engine. Needs a little bit more oomph, you know, to get moving. So we're going to shoot for 14 initial, and, uh, you know, then we'll see what it likes. You got to look for your timing marks. On a Pontiac, they're cast into the timing cover right there. It's real easy. And they go down to like 12 or something like that. There will be a line cut in your balancer or damper, whichever, whatever kind of setup you got. And uh, that's going to be the line you're looking for. So you probably can't see it or hear me right now. That zero, and it's bouncing right around 12 degrees. She's alive. This old Pontiac's got more to give. She sounds good. As for this timing light, you know, I gotta say, <laughs> for the price and where it was made, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, works just fine. What was it called again? The Kai Z. K Y Z E E. I gotta say, if you're in need of a dial back timing light, this isn't a bad way to go at all. It's a little bit on the light side, a little bit chintzy, but for the price, it's pretty good. It seems very accurate, and I don't know, not bad. It's alive! Well, friends and potential enemies, I think that's going to do it for this one, because I am freezing and now also probably suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. It's okay, though. It was so worth it. That thing sounds great. It sounds... I, Sounds better than when I pulled it, actually. Carried good oil pressure. It was like 60 pounds oil pressure. I didn't hear any weird noises or anything. She's good to go. Obviously, we've got a long road to go yet, but that was a huge milestone we just crossed. So, again, I gotta ask you guys, again, to like and subscribe, and most importantly, share this around. Share it to your Facebook groups, car groups, you know, whatever, Instagram, put it on your feed, say, dude, this is nuts. And it is, and I am. And, you know, that's cool, though. And see, I like that. And that's how we've been growing this whole time. I mean, I know it's been suggested some, but so many of the subscribers that I talked to found it on, you know, this guy was talking about it, or found it on Facebook, and, and I like that so much. That's all I got for you. Uh... Uh, what are we going to do next time? I think next time I, she's running, right? Uh, we got to put a drive shaft in it. And I say we pound out the sheet metal, bolt it together. And then the time after that, I bet we're driving this. I mean, this has gone quick, right? So uh, stay tuned, guys. And uh, I mean, there, there is going to be no finale here. Uh, we have an event planned. We're going to go down to the No Name Nationals in Sykeston, Missouri. Uh, that's going to be a great event. It's just for YouTube creators to participate. You need 500 subscribers to participate. And I'm kind of iffy on that. I know how hard it was for me to get to that point, and it was hard. So if you have something that's like super interesting, share your channel with me, and I'll see if I can help you get that 500 subscribers because I want to see as many people as possible at this event uh, and that would be a real good time so you know check that out uh, and also I need someone to call me out uh, because that's the thing to do these days I guess uh, is when you're racing I guess you call people out for like hey you know mine's bigger and you know, I, I not really ever been my thing, but hey, you know, let's try. You know, okay. If uh, you know, if you happen to know anybody <laughs> ice cream brush, who might have something equivalent to this, and you know, I don't think they'd be too scared of just a old wore out Pontiac, with old wore out Pontiac 400 in it. You know, just a just an old wore out car. You know, I mean, look at it. Anyway. 
if you know of anybody or you are someone you know I don't know let's go make a couple passes down on the drag strip down there if you guys want to check that out I think it's nonamenationals.com once again thank you roadkillcustoms.com roadkill customs magazine that there is a plethora of information on there and it's not just about cars it's about growing your brand and things like that if you're a youtuber it's a great place to hang out I have that link to my channel uh, and thanks to Kai Z for sending me that timing light because I'm thoroughly impressed and uh, my last one melted to death in a in a engine like catastrophe so you know I, I needed that actually it really came in handy thanks a lot guys thanks for watching and we're gonna see you next time